So I've got a uh, Excel spreadsheet where I've got a macro written, which will just be my periods of cover calculation. But other than that, it's blank. So just uh, how I tend to kind of organize these things, just cosmetically, I like to get rid of the grids. So I make it all white. Let's give it a label. So All right, and then we're gonna start here uh, with a couple of rows. So we're gonna design this thing essentially horizontally with time moving from left to right. So this will just be finish good. Then uh, our first row is gonna be, represent what is received into the distribution center. The next one is, uh, we'll call it forecast because it's not just uh, sales, it's future forecast. Inventory level. Uh, let's, we'll start with months of cover. And then, you know what, we'll, we'll also throw in inventory value. Now the next thing we need are units of measure. So in finished goods, we're gonna call the unit of measure each is, which is just basically the number of finished goods. change this to and this will be in months and then the inventory value will say in uh, millions of US dollars pretty straightforward okay our time buckets will assume this model is going to start uh, in August 2012 and then we'll go forward, uh, you know, through 2013 or something like that. Okay, so let's just do some formatting here to, to make this look pretty and keep ourselves organized. Start with that. Add some color, again, just to, to make it look neat. And the color kind of helps because in the future we're gonna build on this. And uh, I tend to kind of have each um, kind of operation in the supply chain a different color. So this blue I'm just using here to represent the finished goods at the distribution level. When we move back to, let's say, the packaging step, uh, which be, would be our last kind of manufacturing operation uh, in the supply chain, I might use yellow or something, just so the, the color coding starts to show the different steps in the supply chain. But anyway, this gives us uh, something to work with. And then all of this stuff below inventory or kind of calculations. So let me see if I can make this different. Oops, this is the one I want. I just did a double border just to separate out, uh, you know, kind of the, the top three rows are where we're going to be doing our work, you know, so receipts, forecast, and inventory, that's what's really going on at the distribution center. Uh, and then inventory coverage and inventory value are just some calculations. So I just wanted to separate it out. So let's put in some fake forecasts. So uh, we're going to kick this model off at the end of August 2012. So demand is going to start in September 2012 and going forward. So I'll just type in some numbers. So we have... Okay, so now we have some theoretical forecast for this particular finished good. And let's say our starting inventory is, um, we'll say we're at 2,500 units. 
Okay, so now we need to start to at least fill in our calculations for the inventory balance going forward. So we're going to work on, on this row. So this is really simple. This goes back to uh, that balance equation that we, we spoke about at the beginning. So our ending inventory for September 2012 is going to be the beginning inventory for the period plus whatever is received minus the demand or, or the sales. So beginning inventory for September is equal to the ending inventory of August. So we're going to say, here's our beginning. We're going to add in whatever the receipts turn out to be minus whatever demand is. And that's going to give us our ending inventory level for September. And then we can just drag that formula forward. So if nothing was to be received in this row, you can see what our inventory balance is going forward and we go negative out there in November. But we'll fill in this receipts field here in a second. So let's move to inventory coverage. So I've got a formula written in here and you can write all types of simple or, or complicated inventory coverage formulas, but I just have a periods of cover kind of VB script that I've embedded in Excel, which just looks at the current inventory level and it calculates how many periods of forward looking demand do we actually have covered. So uh, what I do is it's POC and I can share this code with you uh, uh, at, at another time, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so it's our inventory level, and then it's gonna compare that to several demand buckets going forward. So I'll just pick some, so this is six months, I'll just say nine months of demand. And then we'll, we'll reduce the, uh, the number of zeros here a good bit. Okay, so you can see that 2,500 units is 2.2 months of cover, so how does it come to that? So it's going to look and say, okay, well, 2,500, I've got the first month covered. Uh, October is 1,200 units, so now I got 2,200 uh, 2, units for the next two months of demand. Yep, compared to 2,500, I have that covered. And then when it gets to November, it's going to say, November's demand is 1,300. Well, I only have 300 units left from the starting inventory after it's been consumed in September and October. So 300 units of 1,300 is basically two-tenths of the month. So that's how we arrive at this periods of cover being 2.2 months. So I'm just going to drag this forward and you'll see uh, what this looks like. So we've got, you know, 1.2 months. So the 1500 in September covers October and part of November. And then here at the end of October, the 300 units only covers a portion of November. And then we have nothing because we've consumed all of our inventory. Now, the way I wrote this formula, it doesn't actually you know, calculate a negative months of cover. It just zeroes it out, which that, that, that's fine. It's not a big deal. Okay, so now let's calculate our replenishment requirements or our receipts. So let's say that we want uh, to bring in a quantity of inventory that's needed to make sure at any given month we have two months of inventory. So if you go back to our equation for receipts, receipts equals uh, the ending inventory. So this is going to be what we want the inventory to be minus the beginning plus sales. So for us, we want, we want the ending inventory to be two months of cover, which is the sum of the next two months of demand minus the beginning inventory plus the sales. All right, so that says I need to bring in a thousand units if I want to end the month at two months of cover. So uh, you can see that ends us with 2,500 units. 2,500 covers October at 1,200 and then November at 1,300. And then at the end of November, we would have nothing in inventory, assuming we didn't bring anything in in the future. So that's how this works. Now, uh, because I want to make sure I have this receipts row written so that it doesn't bring in negative inventory, which obviously couldn't couldn't happen, or I guess in theory it could, you could transfer the inventory to another distribution center. But so we're just gonna write a simple if statement. So if this is essentially positive, this is what I wanna use. And if it's negative, then we're just gonna have it. Oops, sorry about that. doesn't need this okay so that just protects it from a situation where uh, it doesn't need doesn't try to bring in negative inventory so for example if this was a lot of inventory here at the beginning well above two months of cover you're gonna see it's going to zero it out 
and not try to bring in negative inventory to bring us down to, to just two months of cover, which wouldn't work in reality. All right, so we'll just drag that forward. So you can see it has planned to bring in replenishments in each monthly bucket uh, that would be sufficient to cover demand plus leave ending inventory for that period uh, at the desired two months of cover. And that's all there is to it, to model um, finished goods or to model the inventory, demand and replenishments for one finished good at one location in our supply chain. So if you wanted to calculate inventory value, this is a, a very simple thing you can do. You, in your model, you'll start to create a parameter section. And let's say we had um, inventory value um, finished good. And let's say it was $100 per, uh, per unit. So all right, we'll leave it kind of like that. So all you need to do is then say, here's my standard cost for this finished good times how many finished goods I have actually in inventory. We're going to reference that standard cost in all of the, uh, the cells going forward. And then we'll neaten some of this up just to make it look prettier. I'll just uh, change how some of this is presented. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got our demand for the finished good. We've got our inventory projection. We've got our receipts. We have how many months of cover we have in each uh, bucket that, that's in the model. And then we've got an inventory value. So you can see our inventory assuming a hundred dollars standard cost per unit uh, is you know around a quarter of a million dollars and you can see how this number goes up and down as the actual inventory level uh, moves around so that's all there is to modeling one finished good uh, at one location so let me just save this and then if you wanted to kind of do this same thing but you wanted to do this in weekly buckets uh, it's very simple to be honest with you you're just kind of changing some labels so our, our periods of cover is going to be weeks. We're going to pick a, uh, a starting point. So let's say this is August 20th. And then we'll do the previous period plus seven days. I'll change this format as well. All right, so now we're in weekly buckets. And uh, I would change the demand, obviously. So now our demand's in weeks. So let's just make up some fake numbers here. Okay, so in this case, you can see if we left our starting inventory at 2,500 units and we are now planning in weekly buckets and we adjusted our forecasted row to represent the demand per uh, in weeks, you would see that 2,500 units would be, in this case, nine weeks of inventory. And you can see it works down until we get to actually, in this case, two weeks of inventory. So if we wanted to maintain, let's say, a kind of a, a two-month safety stock, or let's just call it eight weeks in our case, then instead of this having just two periods covered, we'd have to be out for eight periods. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So now we're out here to M. If we drag that forward, you can see probably the next week is we're going to start to bring in some inventory level, which is exactly what happens. So two weeks out, we bring in a little bit so that we maintain this eight weeks of inventory. And that's all there is to it. So in Excel, whatever kind of time period you want to plan in, you just set your columns uh, to that and, and just move kind of left to right. That's the way it's always worked for me. I think it's pretty, pretty simple.